Hello Prime 4, so today we are continuing to read Roald Dahl's James and the Giant Peach and so far we've got all the way up to chapter 12. Lots of exciting things have happened. So far we know that James has crawled inside the peach and he hasn't got any way of getting out, he's trapped. He's met a lot of creatures inside this peach and at first he was really really frightened of them but after a while he realised that they're not going to hurt him. Chapter 12 James decided that this was most certainly not a time to be disagreeable, so he crossed the room to where the centipede was sitting and knelt down beside him. Thank you so much, the centipede said. You're very kind. You have a lot of boots, James murdered. murmured. I have a lot of legs, the centipede answered proudly, and a lot of feet, 100 to be exact. There he goes again, the earthworm cried, speaking for the first time. He simply cannot tell, stop telling lies about his legs. He doesn't have anything like a hundred of them. He's only got 42. The trouble is that most people don't bother to count them. They just take his word. And anyway, there is nothing marvellous, you know, centipede, about having a lot of legs. Poor fella, the centipede said, whispering in James's ear. He's blind. He can't see how splendid I look. In my opinion, the earthworm said, the really marvellous thing is to have no legs at all and to be able to walk just the same. You call that walking, cried the centipede. You're a slitherer. That's all you are. You just slither along. I glide, said the earthworm primly. You are a slimy beast, answered the centipede. I am not a slimy beast, the earthworm said. I am a useful and much loved creature. Ask any gardener you like, and as for you, I'm a pest, the centipede announced, grinning uh, broadly and looking around the room for approval. He is so proud of that, the ladybird said, smiling at James. Though, for the life of me, I cannot understand why. I'm the only pest in this room, cried the centipede, still grinning away. Unless you count old green grasshopper over there, but he's long past it now. He's too old to be a pest anymore. The old green grasshopper turned his huge black eyes upon the centipede and gave him a withering look. Young fella, he said, speaking in a deep, slow, scornful voice, I've never been a pest in my life. I'm a musician. Here, here, said the ladybird. James, the centipede said. Your name's James, isn't it? Yes. Well, James, have you ever in your life seen such a marvellous, colossal centipede as me? I certainly haven't, James answered. How on earth did you get to be like that? Very peculiar, the centipede said. Very, very peculiar indeed. Let me tell you what happened. I was messing about in the garden under the old peach tree and suddenly a funny little green thing came wriggling past my nose. Bright green it was and extraordinarily beautiful and it looked like some kind of tiny stone or crystal. Remember what James did with the crystals? Oh, but I know what that was, cried James. It happened to me too, said the ladybird. And me, Mrs. Spider said. Suddenly there were little green things everywhere. The soil was full of them. I actually swallowed one, the earthworm declared proudly. So did I, the ladybird said. I swallowed three, the centipede cried. But who's telling this story anyway? Don't interrupt. It's too late to tell the stories now, the old green grasshopper announced. It's time to go to sleep. I refuse to sleep in my boots, the centipede cried. How many more are there to come off, James? Oh, I think I've done about 20 so far, James told him. Then that leaves 80 to go, the centipede said. 22, not 80, shrieked the earthworm. He's lying again. The centipede roared with laughter. Stop pulling the earthworm's leg, the ladybird said. This sent the centipede into hysterics. Pulling his leg, he cried, wriggling with glee and pointing at the earthworm. Which leg am I pulling? You tell me that. James decided that he rather liked the centipede. He was obviously a rascal, but what a change it was to hear somebody laughing once in a while. He had never heard Aunt Sponge or Aunt Spiker laughing aloud in all the time he'd been with them. You really must get some sleep, the old green grasshopper said. We've got a tough day ahead of us tomorrow, so would you be kind enough, Miss Spider, to make the bed? Chapter 13 A few minutes later, Miss Spider had made the first bed. It was hanging from the ceiling, suspended by a rope of threads at either end so that actually it looked more like a hammock than a bed. But it was a magnificent affair and the stuff that it was made of shimmered like silk in the pale light. I do hope you'll find it comfortable, Miss Spider said to the old green grasshopper. I made it as soft and silky as I possibly could. I spun it with gossamer. That's a much better quality thread than the one I use for my own web. 
Thank you so much, my dear lady, the old green grasshopper said, climbing into the hammock. And this is just what I needed. Good night, everybody. Good night. Then Miss Spider spun the next hammock and the ladybird got in. After that, she spun a long one for the centipede and an even long, longer one for the earthworm. And how do you like your bed, she said to James when it came to his turn. Hard or soft? I like it soft. Thank you very much, James answered. For goodness sake, stop staring around the room and get on with my boots, the centipede said. You and I are never going to get any sleep at this rate. And kindly line them up neatly in pairs as you take them off. Don't just throw them over your shoulder. James worked away fran frantically on the centipede's boots. Each one had laces that had to be untied and loosened before it could be pulled off. And to make matters worse, all the laces were tied up in the most terribly complicated knots that had to be unpicked with fingernails. It was just awful. It took about two hours. And by the time James had pulled off all of the last bits and had lined them up in a row on the floor, 21 pairs altogether, Centipede was fast asleep. Wake up, Centipede, whispered James, giving him a gentle dig in the stomach. It's time for bed. Thank you, my dear child, the Centipede said, opening his eyes. Then he got down off the sofa and ambled across the room and crawled into his hammock. James got into his own hammock and oh how soft and comfortable it was compared with the hard bare boards that his aunts had always made him sleep upon at home. So James's life is much better now inside the peach. Lights out, said the centipede. Nothing happened. Turn out the light, he crawled, raising his voice. James glanced around the room, wondering which of the others he might be talking to. They were all asleep. The old green grasshopper was snoring loudly through his nose. The ladybird was making whistling noises as she breathed and the earthworm was coiled up like a spring at one end of his hammock, wheezing and blowing through his open mouth. As for Miss Spider, she had made a lovely web for herself across one corner of the room and James could see her crouching right in the very centre of it, mumbling softly in her dreams. I said, turn out the light, shouted the centipede angrily. Are you talking to me? James asked him. Of course I'm talking to you, the centipede answered. That crazy glowworm has gone to sleep with her light on. For the first time since entering the room, James glanced up to the ceiling and there he saw an extraordinary sight. Something that looked like a gigantic fly without wings, it was at least three feet long, was standing upside down upon its six legs in the middle of the ceiling and the tail end of this creature seemed to be literally on fire. A brilliant greenish light, as bright as the brightest electric bulb, was shining out of its tail and lighting up the whole room. Is that a glowworm? asked James, staring at the light. It doesn't look like a worm of any sort to me. Of course it's a glowworm, the centipede answered. At least that's what she calls herself. Although actually you're quite right. She isn't really a worm at all. Glowworms are never worms. They're simply lady fireflies without wings. Wake up, you lazy beast. But the glowworm didn't stir, so the centipede reached out his hammock and picked up one of his boots from the floor. Put out that wretched light, he shouted, <coughs> hurling the bit up at the ceiling. The glowworm slowly opened one eye and stared at the centipede. There is no need to be rude, she said coldly. All in good time. Come on, come on, come on, shouted the centipede, or I'll put it out for you. Oh, hello, James, the glowworm said, looking down and giving James a little wave and a smile. I didn't see you come in. Welcome, my dear boy, welcome and good night. Then, click, and out went the light. James Henry Trotter lay there in the darkness with his eyes wide open, listening to the strange sleeping noises that the creatures were making all around him, and wondering what on earth was going to happen in the morning. Already, he was beginning to like his new friends very much. They were not nearly as terrible as they looked. In fact, they were, weren't really terrible at all. They seemed extremely kind and helpful in spite of all the shouting and arguing that went on between them. Good night, old green grasshopper, he whispered. Good night, ladybird. Good night, Miss Spider. But before he could go through them all, he had fallen fast asleep. So finally, James has made some new friends. Which insect do you think is in charge? Which insect do you think is the most bossy, the one that bosses James around the most? And have you ever seen a glowworm before? They are pretty cool.